Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Tomorrow's going to be Christmas Eve. And since I just finished reviewing the Santa Claus sequels, now that I bought the free movie collection on Blu-ray, and I did already review the first movie five years ago, back in 2014, now I'm going to finally review Tim Allen's utter Christmas comedy that's so hilarious. It came out on November 24th, 2004 and that is Christmas with the Cranks where he teams up with Jamie Lee Curtis from the Halloween films along with Trading Places, True Lies, A Fish Called Wanda along with Fierce Creatures among many others. Dan Aykroyd is in this as well who was in movies like The Blues Brothers, Ghostbusters, uh, Dragnet with Tom Hanks and other comedies that he's been in. And it also features an all star cast to join in, too. Even Cheese Moran from the Cheese and Sean movies, uh, Jake Busey, who is, of course, the son of Gary Busey. Um, he even got uh, Eric Per Sullivan from the TV show Malcolm in the Middle. In this movie. It's based on the best selling novel in 2001 by, you wouldn't believe this, John Grisham, which the title of the book was called Skipping Christmas. This is the same man who uh, wrote all of these thrillers that have became film adaptations such as The Clients, The Firm, The Pelican Brief, and A Time to Kill. I mean, you wouldn't believe that he actually wrote a Christmas comedy, but he did through his novel. And director Joe Roth, who took over, joining in with uh, screenwriter and filmmaker himself and also producer Chris Columbus, who of course was going to be chosen to direct this, which I think it would have been pretty cool if he was. Or at least that's what Joe Roth thought, that maybe he could, but, but even he said to him he should direct it. And there you go. Because uh, Roth himself actually recalled before the book was published that, that Grisham was right that while he was reading it all that it could turn into a great Christmas movie because it had humor, it had wonderful characters, and it had a lot of heart. And that was the case. Just when uh, Joe Roth was ready to start his production company, Revolution Studios, yeah, this was a new production company at the time, uh, which had a deal with Columbia Pictures to release several of these movies, you know, like Tom Katz, The Animal, a Hellboy, um, several of the Adam Sandler comedies, if you could think about, that sort of thing. It's hard to believe that when they were going to do this comedy, they, they were hoping they were going to get someone to be part of, and that's how they got Tim Allen, Jamie Lee Curtis, and all the rest. And... That's what they were going for. Okay, well, before we get to the review, yeah, I got this DVD a long time ago. I think I got this at Albertsons um, for a lot cheaper. And, yes, this is one of those DVDs that have both the widescreen and full screen uh, formats included. There's no features, sadly. And I wish there was. Yeah, and you can see what the DVD looks like. <laughs> You can see Frosty. <laughs> free Frosty! Free Frosty! Yeah, that creepy Frosty. The snowman. This gets a lot of hate, too, upon its release. I will never understand critics sometimes. I mean, I, I will respect their opinions. Don't get me wrong. But trust me on this one. It's not exactly as horrible as you think. I mean, comedies like this should always be as wacky as they could be. I mean, that's just the whole point. I mean, there have been several wacky comedies that eventually got a lot of attention. But this one just gets so much hate. And it's just ridiculous. Because when I saw this movie in theaters, along with my mother and, and my sister, uh, my brother Jason didn't came because he was busy. Um, he was at... To the university in Northridge. Um, 
when we saw this movie, we were laughing hysterically. The entire audience had laughed. They were having a great time. They knew that they were watching a comedy. So I don't know what what these critics are smoking somehow. But either way, it did not deserve a 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. It did not deserve a 5.4 on IMDb. It deserves better. And that's why I felt like this comedy is criminally underrated. And I hope this movie gets a Blu-ray someday. I mean, even if it, they gave it to Mill Creek or whatever company they choose, or maybe Sony themselves, if they had to release this on an MLD, I mean, that'd be cool. I mean, maybe they might track down some features, maybe not, but otherwise, you know, at least we had it. Um, that's for sure. I would rather watch this movie than Surviving Christmas that came out um, the same year as this. And I know this was also the movie which originally the title was going to be called Skipping Christmas, but they had to change it to this because of that film. You know, and that movie probably deserves a lot more worse reviews than this. So, never understand. The story is simple it's about the cranks. You know, two couples and their daughter. While she's away for the holiday season, their plan was to spend time on a 10-day cruise while skipping Christmas altogether, which causes a, an uproar for the entire neighborhood. And they're just driving them insane. But if the daughter arrives with her fiancé, they only have 12 hours to set everything up, creating a Christmas party, so now things will go for the better, if that's the case. It stars Tim Allen, along with Jamie Lee Curtis, Dan Aykroyd, uh, Julie uh, Gonzalo, M. M. Walsh, Elizabeth Franz, Eric Per Sullivan, Cheese Moran for the Cheese and Sean films that he was in. Jake Busey, the son of Gary Busey, and I know he was in that TV show, I think, called um, Shasta McNasty, among others. Austin Pennington, uh, who was in The Muppet Movie and Guarding Test, among other films. Tom Poston uh, from the TV show New Hearts, um, and he was who played George. And uh, he was also in episodes of Home Improvement, and interestingly enough, uh, this almost kind of feels like a Home Improvement uh, movie, even though it's unofficially, mostly because you have you know, some of the cast members from who appeared on the show. Anyway, <laughs> um, Kim Rhodes, uh, Bernie uh, Watson Johnson, Arden Marin, Renee Lavin. Uh, Patrick uh, Breen, Caroline Rea, yeah, from S Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Felicity Huffman, who's from the TV show Desperate Housewives, uh, Kevin Chamberlain, and David Hornsby. It's uh, written by Chris Columbus, of course, always been best known for giving us Home Alone, that he directed. Mrs. Doubtfire. He just recently did the Christmas Chronicles 2. Um, among uh, many others he's done in his career. And it's directed by Joe Woff, who also had directed uh, movies such as. Um, I've, yeah, he did direct it, uh, movies like um, Coop de Ville. And he also did a movie called Freedom Land with uh, Samuel Jackson and Julian Moore. And several others he's done. But he's also a producer you know, for production companies like Morgan Creek and Revolution Studios. And he also has his own production company, too. Mothers. 
The movie begins in Riverside, Illinois. We meet the couple, Lufer and Nora Crank, both played by Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis, had saw their daughter, Blair, played by Julia Gonzalo, to depart for a Peace Corps uh, assignment in Peru on the Sunday following Thanksgiving through an empty nest syndrome that joins in. So therefore, Lufer calculates that he and Nora had spent $6,132 during the previous year for the holiday season. And not looking forward to celebrate Christmas without their daughter. He suggested that they should invest the money that they usually spend on decorations, gifts, and entertainment, along with all the other treats and, and food for themselves, to a 10-day Caribbean cruise instead. So, Luther insists that they should completely boycott the holidays, and eventually Nora will agree. <sighs> of course, I mean, already, you know, just when they already uh, took their daughter uh, straight to the airport, uh, they they were about to try to get some more, um, you know, treats and other stuff so they can be able to make all their, you know, baking cookies and all this other stuff. Like they had to get uh, all the supplies. Of course, with uh, Lufer trying to go all the way straight into the local market, that's where we spotted a a mysterious Santa who's like selling all these. Um, umbrellas or he basically was bringing a a sand umbrella and that's what he was telling him you should bring an umbrella but he says no but then <laughs> all just when he tries to go in I mean for this uh, horrify uh, you know rainy day I mean suddenly all that water starts to come directly from the awning <laughs> and it fell all the way at him <laughs> just when he was trying to go back to because he keeps forgetting all the you know, the white chocolate and all that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the cranks are amazed to discover that they are considerable paras as a result of the decision to skip the holidays. But most vocals in their objections are neighbors, uh, joined by Vic Frohmeyer, played by Dan Aykroyd, along with Walt Sheet, played by M. Emmett Walsh. Um... Bick, of course, he's the self-proclaimed leader of the entire street who organized a campaign to force the cranks to decorate their home. While Walt doesn't seem to like Luther at all, especially when Luther comes over and and Walt's uh, fluffy uh, cat appears and and he accidentally steps on his tail all the time. Anyway, his efforts was primarily personal, however he reveals that Walt's wife, Babe, is suffering from cancer, perhaps by dampening his holiday spirits. The children, that's led by Big son Spike, who's played by Eric Persullivan, constantly forced him to put up a Frosty the Snowman decoration, yes, Frosty, and this was a creepy one as we saw. <laughs> And then the Christmas carolers try to uh, go in, you know, trying to uh, annoy them. You know, they're just, they're totally obnoxious having to hear about their news. And, and already with Luther setting out all the, the notes through, through his, uh, you know, through all the workers. And then they were already shocked about that. They even called him Scrooge and all. Uh, yeah, it just seems like they're just annoying they're just driving them up the wall. I mean, so they brought in the carolers. They're about to sing, you know, Jingle Bells and and Frosty the Snowman. And, you know, they were annoying them already, too, for, for so long. I mean, there's even a scene, too, where uh, Nora was uh, knitting, and suddenly... <laughs> One of the carolers uh, popped up out of the window, and they just keep continuing with the scheme. So, because of that, um, they had to play with their own games, with Luther actually going around uh, bringing in 
the hose and actually freezing the entire lawn so that way you know everyone will start tripping which the mailman tripped and so is the rest of the carolers which Nora suddenly slide in <laughs> and then she found out that <laughs> even Walt's uh, cat got frozen <laughs> yeah you can see how um, the cat was blinking um, his eyes <laughs> oh that was crazy uh, to make matters worse, even the newspaper gets into the act by publishing the front page story complete with a photograph of the crank's house. And while Luther and, but still, Luther and Nora continue to stand on their ground, you know, hoping they'll play fire with fire with the neighbors and everyone around. I mean, of course, um, with that aside here, I mean, already waiting for a couple days to finally leave you know, on Christmas morning, you know, just to set off on the cruise. I mean, they had to go to a local tanning salon to, which had uh, both uh, Luther and Nora, you know, getting some tan. <laughs> of course, you know, they had to wear their, their bathing suits. Unfortunately, they got popped in by. Um, by the the reverend um, but then they suddenly got bumped in by a priest named Father uh, Zabriskie who was played by Tom Poston so they were pretty shocked to find out what was going on okay therefore now while they're while the two are processing and practicing on Christmas Eve morning they receive a phone call from Blair that they announced that she's actually at the Miami International Airport um, with her Peruvian fiance named Uike. And Uike is played by Renee Lavin. So now, because of that, they had to have 12 hours to set up the entire um, Christmas decorations set up all the food not to mention the fact that since um, Luther didn't buy a Christmas tree because he skipped it last time uh, he decided to go back to um, the folks who had the, the Christmas tree that they had to sell for 75 bucks I mean he had like other deals since they weren't selling well uh, the Christmas tree that he got suddenly uh, <laughs> became pretty much naked so now he had to go by to his uh, friends and neighbors' house because they're about to leave uh, for the holidays uh, to borrow a Christmas tree uh, with the help of Spike. But then that seems to go into trouble when the cops, uh, Solano and Treen, both played by Cheese Moran and Jake Busey, had arrived and was ready to arrest Luther. But Spike finally appears, and <laughs> so now, you know, he was off the hook, and they try to bring it into the house as soon as possible, because I know they also accidentally uh, dropped some of the decorations. Yeah, some of them were broken, too, the ornaments, yeah, including the baby first Christmas. Meanwhile, Nora was rushing straight to the local uh, ranch market, and believe it or not, though, that ranch market was, is actually, I'm actually right close to where that ranch market is at. Um, it's the same location where they shot it uh, in the movie uh, Old School. You know, the one with uh, Will Ferrell, um, Vince Vaughn, and uh, Luke Wilson, you know, that comedy. Um, yeah, which unfortunately that store is now closed. Uh, it became uh, Moss's Supermarket, um, but that's been closed down, sadly. Uh, it was actually right across to where the uh, the Wishy Washy uh, Coin Laundry is at. Yeah, we usually go there uh, with the gas station, the post office, and all. That's the same location, so I couldn't believe it because they filmed it there. <laughs> uh, anyway, she's about to rush by to find a hickory ham the the one that uh, their daughter loves and it was only one left so um, 
she had a lot of trouble trying to get that hem. So then another um, another person had one too, was ready to buy it, but then she she had to, you know, try to bribe him into taking that. And when she finally got the ham, she accidentally dropped it, um, and suddenly it got crushed. So, just didn't seem to work out this way, too. <laughs> At this point on, um, Lufer decided to finally hang up uh, Frosty all the way on top of the roof, which ends with disastrous results. Yeah, because now he was hanging... Now he accidentally dropped uh, Frosty. Yeah, the entire neighbors were shocked. They were hoping they were going to help out. But it fell, it cracked, and then um, Lufer suddenly uh, got hanged on by the rope upside down. And then they called uh, the fire department to actually bring him down uh, along with the uh, ambulance. So they'll take him in to the hospital. So now they, they've since they just found out already that Blair is coming home, um, uh, at this point on, uh, Vic decided to actually find a way to join in with the rest of the group of neighbors to help them out. You know, help the cranks out. You know, decorate. You know, get all the Christmas foods and and everything around all the decorations before Blair and her fiance uh, Eureka will come. And also trying to have the, the two cops, Solano and Tween, to, just to uh, <laughs> to bring um, Blair and Enrique in because, you know, they didn't have time. But they also had to distract them because they were still not ready to set everything up. Um, so I know a lot of trouble seems to go around, too, was when <laughs> they actually uh, picked on, they took a, uh, a burglar was ready to steal a lot of stuff and they were chasing them around and now they finally caught him right in front of them <laughs> that was very funny so once they finally arrive everything's all exactly as perfect as possible so now you know things are going swell you know but unfortunately though Luther's starting to feel a little down because because he won't be able to go to his precious trip with her or hoping that if they still have time after the party that they might be able to go you know for themselves well they'll be able to stay home and spend time together but uh, Nora thought that you know he was being selfish about this whole thing so then this is where he decided to go all the way straight to uh, Walt's house and decided to actually, um, well, to finally give them the gift that they're about to receive. So he decided that he's not going to go to the trip at all. And he's also apologizing him for, for all the things uh, they were doing. And not to mention he also gave uh, them the ham that they, as a token of their appreciation. You know, because it's the holidays. Hoping things will get better. Um, so at that point on, um, when they when he finally received the gift to them, you know, for the Caribbean cruise, he says that he'll take care of the cats um, all alone because they're not going to be able to go out anyway. They're going to stay in with their daughter and her fiance Enrique, and hoping things will be okay. But then, of course, the burglar suddenly. Um, made a, uh, well at first made a promise with Spike, but he lied. He just, there just so he can steal everything. He was hoping he was going to have food, and he says that he had kids, but he doesn't. So he's just going around stealing, and was ready to get out, go on top of the roof, and was, until the cops finally came and stopped him. Yeah. And of course, um, the mysterious uh, man appears. Which actually, he did appear um, at the Christmas party, and we learned that his name is actually, believe it or not, uh, Marty, um, played by Austin Pendleton. Yes, the umbrella salesman who, who somehow knows everyone. 
So he's pretty much uh, our Santa. <laughs> so they realized that, you know, skipping Christmas is a lousy idea. Well, there's always next year. <laughs> and that's how the film ends. I always thought it was hilarious. I mean, no doubt. I mean, I couldn't stop laughing every time I watched this movie. I mean, with all the crazy slapstick it went into it and all the the funniest moments here and there, you know, like the rainy day scene or or even the the, the moment too where Vic was chasing uh, Nora and suddenly um, Nora was ready to uh, you know close the win the car window and <laughs> it almost crushes uh, Vic's hands, but apparently the gloves were stuck in there, <laughs> or the scene where uh, Luther was getting a Botox, which he had trouble trying to, you know, you know, swallow or eat the the fruit cups. Yeah, you can see how his eyebrows was all tinted like this. <laughs> and of course, with all that tanning that they had, they're trying to actually make him look more like he wasn't there. <laughs> or of course, as I already mentioned, you know, where he freezes the entire long everyone started tripping or even the <laughs> or any of the other uh, funny moments here and there I mean this was just one crazy comedy but it did have a lot of hearts it really shows I mean it does I mean they learned their lesson about you know skipping a holiday I mean they knew that this was this wasn't going to be much of a good idea, although Lufer at first felt like, you know, he was just self, he was sort of being selfish too, but the point is though, was that they thought that this would be good, it would be good for them to actually take a break, you know, because they, they've been doing a lot of holiday stuff, you know, with their daughter, and if, if she's going to take a break too, then why not they? Plus at times though, the neighbors, as obnoxious as they were, it's funny how Dan Aykroyd's in a film like this, considering that he did play an obnoxious neighbor before in Neighbors, so I felt like this sort of relates to that. But it's a whole different story here. <laughs> so it remind me of that. Um, but, at times though, they were pretty rude. I mean, after hearing all that uproar that, that they were going to skip a holiday, they're thinking like, you know they're they're being mean like they don't even care about the holidays at all they like they hated it but they know that they didn't hate it they just want to take a break I mean doesn't everybody deserve a break these days I mean it's obviously they really meant that they were gonna take a holiday cruise together you know as a couple you know, so they'll probably have the best Christmas over there or perhaps you know they're gonna have a Christmas there anyway if, if this is the case but it just seems like, you know, you know, they're driving them nuts and all that. I mean, they really deserve an apology for that. I mean, they I know they had done a lot of hard work to put everything together for 12 hours. But you know, they had they had to take a lot of time and effort to do so. Plus the movie was never meant to be realistic anyway. Of course. I mean, if, there are people out there who can skip a holiday just so they can move on with their lives and everything. And, I mean, there are even people who are not a big fan of uh, the holiday season anyway. You know, like, not many people are big fans of Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, even the Easter for that matter. So, hell, not many people even celebrate the holidays too, so. It happens, but I know all families would, but it's not like, you know, both uh, Lufer and Nora were bad people, because there aren't. They just deserve a break. I mean, it's money issues here. They're trying to save money. We all do. Um, therefore, um, it does have a nice, uh, soundtrack too. I mean it's a lot of Christmas songs too. Like you have the Ramones, uh, the Charms, um, Tina, Shugada, and um, even some other um, 
classic Christmas songs like from uh, Brenda Lee, the Brian Sessler uh, Orchestra, and even El Elvis Presley to join. So, because it does feel like an actual Christmas uh, movie already, as you know. And um, the cinematography looks um, incredible. Um, some nice editing too, which the editing kind of goes pretty quick too. It's done by Nick Moore. Like, I mean, there's even a scene where just when um, when Spike was already calling, you know, the officers to hoping to get everything set up, trying to grab Blair and Eureka as soon as possible, it does that quick editing that just kind of gets a little jarring at times. So that was the case. Anyway, um, the writing was definitely um, definitely uh, pays a tribute to the um, the John Grisham novel too, and it really uh, set it up straight forward. So it actually did justice to it. Uh, the direction by Joe Roth was incredible. It definitely feels like what a what a watching definitely feels what a wacky comedy should be with all the slapstick. And the platfalls and all that. I mean, definitely the better platfalls and slapstick than the third movie had suggest. Okay, probably could have been closer to being a PG-13 comedy rather than just being a a PG rated, you know, because there are some adult language in there. Anyway, uh, for its 60 million budget, uh, they shot this at uh, Downey Studios. Um, the same place they shot uh, the deferred movie. Um, they shot some of the other scenes, um, in, even though considering that this whole movie was supposed to be set in Chicago and all. But most of all, they did shot it here too. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> in my area. So I love that. Now it only made uh, 96.6 million uh, at the box office worldwide. It earned uh, 21.6 million. So, um, it opened at number three, along with uh, Incredibles and and even the um, National Treasure. So it, it was sort of a modest hit, and it's good to see that. Um, for those who haven't seen it, or for those who have seen it, I mean, they, it's it's nice to hear that it's getting some attention. I just really hope that someday, you know, if it gets like a Blu-ray or a 4K, I hope maybe they'll get, you know, plenty of that so people can see it in high definition. That's why, you know, I love this comedy, and I'll never get tired of it. And, and that's why it became part of my holiday favorites. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, uh, that's uh, Christmas with the Cranks, and I give this hilarious Christmas comedy, you know what, four and a half stars, um, almost closer to five, yeah, I know it sounds pretty nuts, but I don't care, because <laughs> I just, I had fun. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.